I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer. And I'll tell you, you know, one of the things that I always find interesting in this work is how I'll talk about something and talk about something and talk about something, and then it comes home to roost. But I don't know, somehow the warning signs might not get noticed. So what you're looking at here is the image up there. Okay. So you guys might remember the flash crash that took crude oil down below zero, actually almost about 40 bucks minus 40 bucks a barrel last April. Okay. This is what that looked like. And of course, then the CFTC goes in and starts running a report. And, you know, they find that, e that, well, they just didn't name any culprits, or at least on the surface they didn't. In the meantime, who ate it in the shorts? Of course, Muppets, meaning naive investors. Thanks you, thank you, Goldman Sachs. They were the ones that really kind of coined that. But how it's the average investor that always eats it on the short. So for those people out there that think that they're smarter than the algorithm, algorithms or the trading algorithms or think that they're smarter than the professional traders, I got to tell you, this game is rigged and you're not on the winning side. But out of the CFTC report, and, and, and you're going to forgive me on this one because I have to read this whole piece and then I will dilute it for you or, or rather encapsule it for you. This report does not analyze the proprietary of trading by any particular trader or group of traders. See, so they're not going to name anybody. That's what they're telling you. Additionally, to the extent any trading activity may have been abusive, manipulative, disruptive, or otherwise unlawful. An evaluation of that activity is beyond the scope of this report. As such, this report does not consider whether forces outside of supply and demand impacted prices leading up to, on, or around April 20th nor does this report identify the root cause or causes of any price movement of the WTI, so that's West Texas Intermediary Oil contract, leading up to on or around April 20th. Furthermore, as is customary, nothing in this report should be interpreted to either confirm or deny the existence of an enforcement investigation by the commission related to the matters addressed therein. So really what they're trying to tell you is, mm, you know, we really don't know why. That's not entirely true though. A root cause analysis evaluating individual price movements is beyond the sco scope of this report. So they're telling you, mm, yeah, we don't know. So there's no finger to point, nobody's to blame, the retail investors, the normal average guy that thinks that they're going to day trade because they want to fund their retirement or what have you. Yeah, you just ate it in the shorts. Too bad. So sad. But what I also want to point out before I move on to this next slide is that that should have been a wake up call because oil went negative. Do you think that might be able to happen with the stock market or the bond markets? We do have negative interest rates. What about negative principal? What are you going to owe if you're trading or you're sitting in ETFs or, or mutual funds in bonds? I don't know. But the fact that for the, for, for the first time in history, crude oil could go negative should negative should have been a wake up call, just like what happened with the shelves in March and April. So now let's move on because while they say that they're not going to point fingers and they really don't know what the root cause is, I think I do. And I think they said it in the report. 
And by the way, you will find these the links to this on our blog, read this report. So what they say is the process of reducing the amount of the total number of futures contracts that remain open without an offsetting position or fulfilled by delivery or open interest through, this is the piece in here, trading or netting known as compression. You guys, I have been talking to you since they first created this in 2013. This is compression activity. And you may recall that what this activity does is it makes the derivatives that the banks, the outstanding notional value of derivatives decline. So it made it look like the trading, the speculative trading activity in the banks was declining. No, 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 no. It was not declining. It was only hiding what they were really doing. So, um, and they say the level of trading to achieve compression was historically high. Yeah historically since 2013, because that's when they changed the formula so that banks did not have to hold as much in reserves. So that's the culprit that pushed crude oil below zero, was this new formula and derivatives. Make no mistake about this. This needs to be a warning for everybody out there that's in these fiat markets, the stock market, the bond market. You know, you think you're trading, you think you're doing this, you think you're doing that. The biggest market of all is the derivative market. And all those 640 trillion in notional value that does not represent the true value at risk. Everybody admits it. The ISDA, the IMF, all the alphabet soup of regulators and really, you know, the, the guys that create this alphabet soup to be so complicated. Because as they state, if we make it really complicated, Nobody questions us because your eyes glaze over. You go, well, I, I don't understand that stuff. No, of course you don't. And the real problem is neither do they. They only understand it at a certain level. And, and that level is certainly a lot deeper than I understand it. I'm going to be honest about that. But they failed the test the compression, and this needs to be a huge wake-up call. Market hit 30,000 today. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But it's done on the back of all of this gambling. It's dangerous. It not only is it ridiculous, it doesn't matter. They control the printing presses. They could do anything they want. They don't change behavior. They simply change how they, how they show you, how they account for that behavior. Now, this is still from that report. Remember, you've got the links. The speed and magnitude of the price moved observed on April 20th in the May contract, per, derivatives contract, particularly between 1 and 2.30, 1 p.m. and the end of day settlement at 2.30 Eastern time were exceptional. Despite the triggering of exchange-based control mechanisms designed to impose pauses in the event of rapid or large price moves. They halted trading that day in this oil futures contract 30 times and it still did not prevent it from going negative 40 because of the massive amount of derivative contracts. You think that can't happen with any other fiat contract? And now they're, well, I don't even want to go there yet 
talking about basing the all the money that moves through the economy, no more GDP, let's just base it on the number of contracts because that's all that matters. But the problem is, is that any contract is only as good as the counterparty to that contract. So I would say, we, uh, we're not going to, we're not going to point any fingers. We don't know why that happened. That's garbage. Garbage. They know it, but they also know one other thing. They know that these contracts have to be reset by December 31st. That's their deadline. Not this year, next year. So I don't want to, I want to be clear on that. I never give you dates unless the powers that be give those dates to me. This is not something I can influence. This is not really something I can't tell you. It's going to be Tuesday morning at 835. But guess what? Nobody that we're holding those oil contracts just to go back again. Muppets versus sharks as retail investors feel pain of negative oils. But boy, Wall Street sure made a killing on it. Sure made an absolute killing on it. Okay, the other thing that we've been looking for is beginning to unfold, which are vaccinations to be a necessity for overseas travel. And on the same day, this came out yesterday, COVID passports emerge as key to restarting their international travel. The travel pass will display test results together with proof of inoculation. So the most lo likely outcome from, for this person is I will not be going overseas anymore because I'm not going to get a vaccine. But don't worry because the apps will be arriving on Apple devices in the first quarter and on Andrew, Android devices from April. I mean, I get it. I really do. I don't think that COVID is just something they're making up because I knew too I know too many people that have been impacted by it negatively. Some not so negatively and some very negatively. And certainly a lot of people have died. But I do think that this is being used to push us over into that surveillance economy that we've been talking about for quite some time now. Okie dokie, millions of Americans expect to lose their homes as COVID rages. Now we've been talking about this as well. Almost 18 million adults are behind on mortgage and rent payments. And the CDC suspension on evictions is slated to expire at the end of 2020. So there are a lot of these programs, moratoriums and eviction moratoriums that are ending on December 31st. This is not a good thing. More than 14 million people have little or no confidence that they'll be able to pay next month's rent. So homeowners who went into forbearance, so this is on the mortgage, after the CARES Act faced another deadline in March. Because here's something really interesting. They need to work out how they will catch up on the skipped mortgage payments in March. Well, that's just four months away, a little bit more than four months away. That's not good. That puts a lot of people in a very bad position, including, see, this is the piece that doesn't get talked about enough. But, you know, first of all, a lot of these things have been put into, into packages and sold back to the financial markets. But, you know, what we're really witnessing with COVID is, is the, I, I mean, I really hate to say it because I, I am really praying for an entrepreneurial resurgence, but it's the death knell for mom and pops. Just like Amazon started, you know, in 2000 and was allowed to not charge sales tax and went in and basically forced mom and pops to work for Amazon and Jeff Bezos, the, the richest man in the world now, where a lot of mom and pops no longer exist. And COVID, and especially with the second lockdown coming, I, I mean, 
you know, mom and pop Main Street has been decimated, decimated. Rental properties owned by mom and pop landlords are generally more affordable than those owned by institutional investors. And because these mom and pops still have to pay their bills, their taxes, their insurance, maybe they're not on a mortgage moratorium. They're being forced to liquidate. Now, right now, I mean, look at this home price gains. This came out today. I had another one I was going to use, but this is just as good. And it came out today. You know, home price gains year over year. New York, 4.3%. Phoenix, where I live, 11.4%. Seattle, 10%. San Diego, 9.5%. So what happens to all of those people that have to rent, and especially those that are about to lose their homes, and you've got the average price of a house now at $313,000 with millions of people unemployed. Universal basic income, I mean, that's coming. Okay, maybe it's not going to happen by January 1st like I thought it might. Timing is the biggest challenge for any technician, but they're going to have to. And in all of the money that they've printed and all everything that they've pushed up, well, former Fed Chair Yellen is very likely to be our next uh, Treasury Secretary. And that's kind of handy because she's been through, well, certainly 2008. She was the San Francisco Fed President in 2008. And, of course... She was the Fed chair between 2014 and 2000 and, uh, or 2014 and 2018 when Powell took over. So this graph, you know, you see it all the time because it's Yardeni. Pull this link. He updates the charts and graphs all the time. You know, I use this. And of course, this blue line, oh, let me gather this, the laser pointer. The blue line is the, uh, central bank balance sheets and the red line is the s p 500 and of course we can see on the dow which did hit thirty thousand today okay this massive dip in march when the first when coronavirus was first acknowledged as being really a serious threat and global lockdowns were occurring but the greatest health crisis within the last 100 years, coupled with an economic crisis and everything else that's gone on with this. And you could have a 12,000 point rally from the low to top Dow 30,000. March 23rd. Uh, oh, it is, it is astounding. It's been a very long journey, right? Um, but we have to thank the Fed. We have to thank the monetary policies that they put in place and all the QA that they've been doing. We have to, uh, we have to thank the, the administration and Congress for getting uh, a uh, fiscal package, uh, several fiscal packages in order. So I still think that a lot of this rally is because we have had such massive, massive support and we have extremely low interest rates. But look, the market... Yeah. With a little help from the Fed and taxpayers. So now you have, you have Elon Musk, the second wealthiest man in the world, next to Jeff Bezos, and lots of other billionaires, which I didn't really bother to put on here. But I just love this because Main Street is dying. But Wall Street is thriving. And why is it 30,000 Dow? Because they know more stimulus is coming. But it's coming for them. I mean, look at these. Month to date. Carnival cruises. You going to be taking a cruise anytime soon? F up 44%. Royal Caribbean, 42%. I mean, I mean... Since March 23rd, Home Depot's up 99%. Apple's up 275% since March. It's a good thing this is not a bubble. I mean, really, because that could be really scary if this was a bubble. 
and the carnage that it will wreak against the, you know, against the pension plans, against the insurance contracts, against the 401ks and the IRAs. I hope you can see it. Resorts, you going to be gambling anytime soon? Up 38%, just for this month to date. I mean, what's today? What is today? The 24th? We're not even in a full month. Woohoo! Nordstrom's up 99%. Oh, must have been because I bought some stuff from there. Macy's 75%. Kohl's 55%. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a banner Christmas for some. But it's going to be a bad Christmas for most. I really don't like any of this stuff. But hey, when the central banks control the printing presses and the government gets on board, and look at what's happening with Janet Yellen. Now she's the Treasury Secretary. Okay, or she is nominated. She's not quite yet, but she probably will be. And she was the Fed Chair and the Vice Fed Chair. I mean, she's been part of the Federal Reserve since, I think, what, what 99 or something like that? You think she might have some friends there, buddy buddies? You think she might understand how they work and what they need? And do you think that this might bring taxpayer money closer into the fold with the Federal Reserve money? And the debt levels, how high can they go? I don't know, but we're going to find out, aren't we? But just keep in mind, and I'll, I'll do something on this, that the more money that they print, the less value that money has that's already out there. That is the loss of your purchasing power. That matters to you and me because that's what we need to sustain our standard of living. That's why I got to tell you, it's so important to have a plan and to own gold and silver, not paper gold and silver. Those contracts are so easily and cheaply manipulated. But physical in your possession with the broadest base of buyer. Globally accepted as real wealth and the foundation of dynastic wealth. Gotta Starting with the one. facts, what a SPAC is and how we got here. SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. It begins with a sponsor, usually some well-known person in business or finance, who works with an underwriter to raise capital through a public listing. Investors in the SPAC are writing blank checks to the sponsor to find a future merger target within a certain period of time, usually about two years. That sponsor automatically gets a hefty payday, typically 20% of the equity, and outside investors in this back will purchase a unit for the standard $10 each. Once a merger is identified, those shareholders can choose to redeem their stock at the IPO price plus interest if they'd like. Now that makes investing in SPACs effectively risk-free, and in a world where there's little yield, SPACs have become increasingly popular. More capital has been raised by SPACs this year than in the prior decade combined. In fact, the explosion of capital going into SPACs is just $8 billion shy of eclipsing that raised by IPOs of operating companies this year. It's a cornucopia of capital. Sponsors are getting handsomely rich. The so-called SPAC mafia of arbitrageurs are generating alpha from writing the trade all the way up to the deal announcement. So who is left holding the bag? Well, oftentimes it's the retail investors, guys. There you go. Aren't you tired of it always being the retail investor in Main Street? Because I am. I'm tired of it. Wealth never disappears. It merely shifts location. So how do you make it shift your way? You know, I get these comments, well, if she wasn't selling gold, then, you know, hey, it, it, she'd be a whole lot more believable. What would you like me to tell you to position into? SPACs? Stocks? Keep currencies? I have to tell you to buy gold and silver and also to make sure that you have food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. 
That's what I'm doing for myself. And I promise you, I will never, ever, ever tell you to do something for yourself that I'm not doing for myself. It's up to you. I mean, hey, I give you all the links. Follow them. Go to our blog. Look at what's going on there. Follow those links. Look at the images. Make your own decisions and draw your own conclusions because all I can really give you is my opinion. But you know, I got to tell you, gold and silver have been money for 6,000 years. Compression has been tested since 2013. Digital currencies since 2009. Bitcoin came out in 2009. What, I think it reached 18,000 or something today. Wall Street is beginning to embrace it. Woohoo! So I'm not saying the markets can't keep going up. Of course, you got your finger and you're just creating money out of debt and you're just giving it to, to these guys for free. No wonder Elon Musk is now the wealthiest man in the world. Hey, look, he's had five quarters of profit ability. Not a lot of profits, but at least it's not losses anymore. He deserves to be the second wealthiest man on the planet. When you've got people that are starving because this game is rigged. No doubt about it. Get your positions done. Please get your positions done. This insanity cannot last forever. It can last longer than anybody would think. And certainly Janet Yellen coming in as Treasury Secretary, boy, there will not be any conflict, I'm certain of that one, between using taxpayer money that you are and I are responsible for and Fed money. Woohoo! Sky's the limit. If this was such a great thing, why didn't they do it a long time ago? Because it's all a big experiment. All of it. It used to be just raising or lowering the interest rate would control everything and get us out of a recession that was created by the central banks anyway and government anyway. In 2008, just lowering interest rates didn't work. That's when they started buying up all of those fiat money assets, mortgage-backed securities. Hey, heck, quantitative easing. Here, banks, take all this free money. Free money. We'll pay you to take it. And in March, that didn't work anymore either. So the government jumped on the bandwagon with taxpayer money. This will not end well for most. I am so serious about this. And especially, you know, you, you've been watching me do the financial stability reports. I'm sorry, I couldn't get part three done for today. And this is a kind of a short week. And I am going to take just a second to breathe here for a minute because I'm pretty pooped. But I will have it done for next week. And you look from the horse's mouth, things are not good. But woohoo, the Dow 30,000 and gold at about 1,800. It's a flipping gift. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Because you know the central banks are. So today is a rant. I had so much more. I try and keep these to about 15 minutes. Clearly, I blew it. But I was on with Mike at Rethinking the Dollar on Tuesday. So if you have not listened to that in, that interview yet, you really want to. We He did it all based on Exeter's uh, pyramid. So from the top down, it was awesome. And then I was also on with uh, Lior Gans over at Future Money Trends. Has that been posted yet? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Not yet. So that's coming out. Just stay tuned to our socials and we'll let you know what's going on. On Monday, I was with Trad Cat Knight and uh, that was a live event. So we should have the link already on that. Yes. Okay. So you'll, and where will they, is that below or where, where do you have that link, Dylan? It's on Twitter. 
Okay, so it's in it's in Twitter uh, and also, but check our socials. And next week, I'll be on Coffee with Lynette with Mario and Echo, and he is a fan favorite. So great conversation, so much to talk to. You don't want to miss that. In the meantime, you know, we are going into a long holiday, and, you know, if you want to talk to us, we are here for you. But just be aware that we typically close at 3 o'clock the day before a holiday. So you can give us a call at 888-696-4653. See if there's any space if you want to talk to somebody. I, I mean, I would just call because it's kind of, you know, a couple days before holiday. But in the meantime, I will see you uh, tomorrow. I'll do Q&A with Eric. And until then, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.